You're about to see the first part of our newest investigative series, but we've already started seeing the fallout before it even aired. State Police Superintendent Colonel Kevin Reeves uh, suspended three troopers and is investigating a fourth. Yeah, they are suspected of abusing a ticket writing agreement with many local parishes. That program has also been suspended pending an internal review. It's known as LACE and stands for Local Agency Compensated Enforcement Detail. It allows 44 parishes to hire troopers to write tickets on highways in those parishes. Here in the New Orleans area, St. Tammany, St. Charles, St. John, Orleans parishes, just some that participate in the program. We spent months doing undercover surveillance and found officers making huge paychecks from the program weren't actually patrolling the roads. Hours after we showed state police our findings, they launched a criminal investigation into the four troopers. Over the next several nights, we'll show you findings from a months-long undercover investigation. Here's part one of our investigation, State of Unrest. I'm so fed up and sick. State Trooper Daryl Thomas makes more money than any other law enforcer in Louisiana, more than any district attorney, police chief, the attorney general, even his boss, the superintendent of state police. I'm outraged. Last year, taxpayers paid this trooper $240,000. But our undercover surveillance investigation, backed up by timesheets and traffic citations, shows Thomas may not have legally earned much of that money. This is absolutely, as a matter of criminal law, theft. August 17th, on his timesheet, Thomas claims he started work at 7 that morning, but our undercover camera waited and spotted him leaving for work two and a half hours later at 9.32. For 152 minutes, Thomas stayed at home while earning money from taxpayers. When you're paid, you should be out there patrolling. Absolutely. Doing your job. You should be patrolling or doing a patrol function. We had an undercover camera at Thomas's house for 12 different work days over the past few months. What we found for all 12 days, Thomas claimed hours on his timesheet, he didn't work. You don't have to take a class in criminal law to know that you can't submit fraudulent timesheets. September 4th of this year, Labor Day, Thomas billed taxpayers for 16 hours. The first six hours he worked a ticket writing overtime shift in St. Charles Parish. Then from noon to 10 p.m., his timesheet shows he worked his regular state police shift. But our undercover camera caught Thomas at home from 11.10 until 5 p.m. Almost six hours of that workday, Thomas didn't work. The next day, September 5th, Thomas's timesheet shows he worked until 10 p.m., but he arrived home at 6 and stayed there until 9.13. For three of the last four hours of his shift, Thomas's car remained in his driveway. September 6th, again, Thomas claims he worked 6 a.m. until 10 that night, but our surveillance unit spotted him arriving home at 9.26 a.m. He left at 12.43, but less than six hours later, he once again pulled into his driveway and his car stayed there for three hours until he left just after 9 p.m. Of the 16 hours Thomas billed taxpayers that day, six of them, he remained in his house. The allegations are very concerning here. They're very troubling. After we brought our findings to state police superintendent Colonel Kevin Reeves, he placed Thomas on administrative leave and launched a criminal investigation. We have to conduct an investigation here to see exactly what we're looking at with these troopers. Uh, what we've seen on, on the camera is of great concern. Thomas has historically been the highest overtime earner in the state and is consistently ranked among the state's highest paid employees. The last two years, he's made $240,000. Each year, that included $147,000 in overtime. The numbers are startling. That means Thomas billed taxpayers for, on average, 83 hours of work a week. These are red flags that are screaming to, to somebody to look into. Those overtime levels caught our attention seven years ago when we asked then State Police Superintendent Mike Edmondson about Thomas's workload in overtime. Knowing well, good trooper, very hard worker. I can assure you every one of those hours he put down, he worked. Edmondson guaranteed his work product then, but now we have proof he may not have worked all the hours he claimed. You're committing payroll fraud and you're being paid like executives are being paid. 
This is not the first time a question has been raised about Thomas's timesheets. 20 years ago, Thomas received a four-day suspension for a discrepancy in his timesheet. They caught him claiming work in his timesheet he never performed. Yes, it is payroll fraud. There's no doubt about it. Every day our surveillance camera spotted Thomas, he had discrepancies. August 8th, 1025 a.m., his car at home, while his timesheet shows him working a seatbelt enforcement shift. August 18th, he's home from 1120 through much of the afternoon, even though he claims to work a 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. shift. August 22nd, he arrives home at 7.57 p.m. and stayed there for the remaining three hours of his shift. That ended at 11 p.m. August 23rd, a 12-hour workday, but we found Thomas at home for almost three hours of his shift. In September 11th, we found his car at home for three hours of his regular 10-hour shift. Going and, and staying at your house is unacceptable for anybody in Louisiana State Police while you're being paid. Daryl Thomas makes more than the vice president of the United States. A police officer who should be upholding the law may be breaking the law himself. I'm outraged that I'm paying for work that is clearly based on your reporting and that tremendous undercover work done by your hardworking staff. It's, it's blatant, it's obvious. State police said we couldn't interview Thomas. We sent him a letter asking for comment. That letter was delivered, but we haven't heard back. Tomorrow night, part two of State of Unrest, we dig deeper into the LACE program. We'll show you exactly why state police suspended the program, an undercover video of three other troopers who may be breaking the law, and there's a twist in our story that the state police superintendent calls bold. He says this twist makes our findings even more concerning. In this day and age, qualified immunity remains one of the deadliest threats to U.S. citizens. There is no doubt, and as witnessed daily, that as long as police officers in our uncivilized nation are encouraged to murder without consequences, we can expect no improvements to our life expectancy. According to the United States National Academy of Sciences, and I quote, Police in the United States kill far more people than do police in other advanced industrial democracies. To date, Colorado, New Mexico, and New York have repealed qualified immunity, and we remain hopeful that in the near future, serial killers with badges will be held accountable for the unreasonable execution of citizens. Furthermore, the Academy of Sciences additionally says, journalists have stepped into this void and initiated a series of systematic efforts to track police-involved killings. And I bid to you, my fellow citizens, that this rampage of certified murders must be stopped for the safety of our children, handicapped, and veterans. Please support the new Institute for Justice and their Americans Against Qualified Immunity campaign. Check them out at www.aaqi.com. You'll also find them on Facebook and Twitter. That's Americans Against Qualified Immunity. That's all for now, my brothers and sisters. Stay safe and always film the police.